Hello and welcome to LabVIEW Advantage. In this video, we'll discuss about another design pattern called Qt State Machine. If you have seen the previous videos on State Machine and State Machine node events, you must have found out that uh, the next state in the design pattern was stored in a C register. So this time, we'll be using the queues instead of the C registers. Now the advantage of using this design pattern is you don't need to use delay because uh, the DQ element of this API uh, contains the property of event. It is going to just wait for the data and then it is going to execute if and only if there is a data. So we're organizing the functions uh, that will work as a part of the mechanism to store and handle the next element in the queue. So the opt-in queue is going to initialize the data. In this case, the data would be our states. So I'll have like a three states in this case. It is always recommended to convert your enums into type def, but in this case, I'm ignoring it. Uh, please watch another video on how to make a type def in this channel itself. So uh, the thing is, uh, the DQ element is not going to produce any data unless there is something in the queue. Uh, if you want to understand all the queues, uh, please do not forget to watch the video on how to use queues in LabVIEW. So here, what, are, what I'm doing it is uh, initially I'm inserting the initialized value into the NQ element, and then the DQ element is going to run the initialize state only once. But after the initialize state, I want my state machine to go to the main state. So uh, you need to organize this and make sure that you opt in, perform the opt in queue and release queue outside the main structure. Otherwise, uh, it is going to allocate and deallocate memory continuously. So here, uh, the when you start the system it will go to the initialize and then the second NQ element is going to send uh, this system into main state now let's write some code for this the first thing is going to be my indicator called generate number followed by two boolean controls the first one is going to be generate And then the next one is going to be uh, stop. So now I have got like uh, three elements in my front panel. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize my generate number indicator. That is done. Uh, next thing. In the main state, uh, I'm going to insert the event structure because I want uh, to generate the number only when the user presses generate. So I'm going to select the generate and then put the generate inside the structure. And next I'm going to produce the random number uh, multiply over there and uh, multiply by 10 to generate the number between 0 and 10. Uh, next thing, uh, since this is a NQ, a queued based state machine, uh, whenever the event takes place, it will just wait for the another event. Uh, it is not going to wait because uh, after that, there is no element in the memory or the buffer, so that is why we will need to enqueue the next state again. And since I want to wait for next event, I'm going to enqueue the main again. So that will make sure that you will be waiting for the another event again. Uh, finally, we'll go into the, add the event for the stop. In this case, I duplicated the code and then insert the stop button in there. I don't need that code. And now this state is going to be closed. So I need to add one more case. So I'm going to add case after 
pose is there. So I, I just need to do anything. I just need to make sure that the reference is going to be released. And then I'm going to stop my code. So my code with Qt state machine is complete. Uh, next thing what I'm going to do it is let me explain to you initially your tail lab view that I want to use the queue of that enum and then it goes to the initialize after initialize it after initializing the system it goes to the main in the main there are two events one is called generate that is generating the value and another one is stop so when you press stop you will go to the close and then in the stop case uh, close case it is going to stop the application so let's let us test this code. So if we run the VI and press generate, as you can see, I can generate the values between one to zero to 10, and then I can stop the VI. If you have any questions, please do not forget to comment below. Please like, share, and comment on this video. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for future lab videos.